I was wondering why my computer was so loud. My dumbass left Genshin Impact open the entire time I was recording. <laughs> the entire time Zhao was just standing in Lima Harbor. <laughs> Fucking rip, I just left him there! Reduced to just standing around. How absurd. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to 45 minutes of deep-seated screaming! Alright, it is Saturday morning at 10.15. It is physically impossible for me to have been spoiled at this point. I, I waited an hour, like an extra hour, just to make sure that everything would load properly. So I was just sitting there playing Genshin Impact, trying to pretend like the world wasn't about to go to shit. It's 19 and a half minutes. It's called Risk. So, you know, this is just gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. And it's 14 episodes this volume. This is 11. Um, <laughs> let's just, let's just do it. I'm just, I have reached the point of being so worried. I've been capture recording all the old episodes for the purpose of, um, one, AMVs, and two, <laughs> I'm putting together a video that shows exactly all of Ironwood's dicta dictator-ish tendencies. Um, fun fact, they date back to volume two, so get ready for that, but it's been really fun just sitting here as I'm watching old volumes four, five, parts of three, just like, oh god, we were so afraid for so many things, and so many things didn't happen, and so many things did happen, and it's just like, oh man, we really were worried about just that, huh? And then I got to the Lancer fight with Weiss, and it was a very fun moment of just like, if she, if she takes part in like the final blow on Salem, do you think she could summon Salem in a fight? Like, that'd be, just be fun to see. I'm... oh god. Some evil will never ever die! I was singing this in the shower this morning and trying not to panic! <sighs> I'm already caffeinated, so I'm just like, vibrating heart palpitations, you know. The usual. Let's just fuck it up, man. If anyone tries anything, other than what I've ordered, Mantle's gone. You have one hour to respond. I am the very I model you live up to the title I gave you. of a genocidal general. <laughs> oh. Of course he's not going to do it. <coughs> what? He's bluffing? With the whole city? They may finally push the kids to see reason. Who cares? You fucking kidding me, kid? Good. You're here. <sighs> I need a squad of drones in standby to drop the payload. <gasps> Sir, what for? I believe I was clear in the broadcast. If they give me a reason, I'm going to remove Mantle from the equation. This is how we save Atlas. <laughs> you thought it was bluffing. Ha <laughs> ha. You call this saving Atlas? Doing Salem's job for her? Who? I believed in you. I thought we could work towards something better. Is he gonna die? But now you're throwing it all away. If you don't shut your mouth, I'm going to do it for you. If this is what gets the children to cooperate, then it's worth it. I don't like this either. The top priority is... Do you even believe what you're saying anymore? Do any of you believe in anything? I used to wear this rank with pride. I was waiting for this. Let's see it for what it really is. A collar. <gasps> yep. She's saving your life, kid. You want a collar? Fine. I'll throw this traitor in the brig. Where he belongs. She's saving your life. I love the schnees, but they aren't very good actors. <laughs> I was literally reading a whole thing. 
about the differences between Marrow's and Winter's reasons for leaving and defecting. Okay, Ironwood wants Penny. Otherwise, Mantle is done for. So, how do we stop him? Crow and Robin are still in his custody. And May said Atlas security drones are watching the crater. So, they're trapped too. But and Salem isn't going to stay gone for much longer. So then, it's impossible. Really? See, if Miss Hero with all the answers doesn't have an answer, then we have ours. Shut up. <laughs> okay, then why don't you just leave? Can we please just give each other a chance? Where's Emerald's not with Salem anymore. Ren and Sean. And Ospin is back. Here comes Ruby's mental breakdown when? This doubt and worry and distrust, it isn't getting us anywhere. Then nothing has changed! We're in the exact same place we were yesterday! Arguing over what to do while the kingdom waits to die. Yeah, no one's asked how is Ruby. <laughs> Smart. I'm glad you're all right. Ah, sorry. No matter how much I boost you, they won't go away. Don't apologize. I got hurt doing what I always do. Just another ditzy move from Nora. Mm -hmm. That's not true. How would you know? We were supposed to be a team, but that didn't matter to you. When things went wrong, you pushed us away. You shut people out so you don't have to feel things that are hard. She's right. You're right. I should be apologizing to both of you. When we lost Oscar and things got difficult, I said terrible things. I've been so angry at myself for not being as good as the Aesops, for what happened at Robin's rally, for losing the lamp. I thought if I just focused on working harder, getting stronger, that we, I, wouldn't fail. But my biggest failing was as a teammate and as a partner. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, water under the bridge, buddy. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna go see if I need any help with this. <laughs> I love you, King. And I just wish. I mean, why didn't you say anything? So we failed as a team, but. We succeed as a team, too! I was the one holding us back. Not John. Not you. Me. Well, you're wrong. All I do is make dumb jokes and smash things with a hammer. What? That's not true. <sighs> you put everything you have into what you do. You support everyone around you. You help without worrying about how it might hurt. And that's what I love about... That's why I... Oh, I love you. When my mom ran from the Grimm and left me behind, you found me. We became Ren and Nora. But I realized on this mission apart, I don't know who just Nora is. And if I'm ever going to find out, then I have to do it alone. <laughs> because I've always loved you, Lyran. And that pretty head on your shoulder seems like it's doing a lot better. But I still gotta get mine sorted out before I can be the partner you need. Is that... Okay. It's definitely... 
definitely okay. Get those hallway cameras on a loop. He's really gonna do it. Not if we stop him first. I feel like I'm gonna want to talk about those two at the end of this episode, but something's gonna happen that's gonna take all my focus away. So I just want to state for the record that I love how they handled that so well. There might be a better way. I'm telling you, there isn't. Well, this isn't just about you. It's about everyone. I'm going straight up to the Academy, and I am ending this. Or we fail and people get killed. He deserves this! <clears throat> Marrow, find Marrow. Listen, I get it. You are hurting. You've been hurting for a long time. But let's stop pretending that what you're trying to do here is for anyone but yourself. Clover was a lot of things. You respected him. But I gotta tell you, I think you're the better huntsman. Not because you were the one who walked away, but because you were the one who was fighting for what was right. Don't go telling me that's changed. <sighs> Baby girl. You know... That giant hound kicked us around like we were nothing. But Blake said you and the Chinese managed to take it down. Still having to one-up your big sis, huh? Did she tell you what it was? Underneath? Yeah. You know what that means, then. I wouldn't worry about that. That's what happened to Mom. When I saw its eyes, I knew. Salem used to kill people with silver eyes, like Maria. But she's always wanted me alive. Why would that change unless... When she met Mom, she learned she could do something new. Ruby. We shouldn't lie to ourselves. I wasted our time getting Amity up, thinking help would come, but it didn't. And Amity fell. I was being childish. You were being optimistic. Look, blind optimism isn't great, but no optimism means we've already lost. We need hope. We need to take risks. But mine didn't work. Still got a warning out. Ruby, they're not called sure things. They're called risks. And in case you didn't notice, my plan for Mantle didn't work either. But we got Oscar back. And did a lot more that was never in the plan. Mom took a risk the day she left. And I don't think... I don't think it went the way she wanted it to. But she's still my hero. Hurry! Penny. I can no longer be delayed. Penny, please! I, I must open the vault! I, I do not want... must open the vault and self-terminate. Oh no. I've got her! What do 
Oh no. Emerald, can you fuck with her brain? No. Kill me. And I can make sure the power goes to you. No. Please. Please. I cannot fight it. Yes, you can. It's just a part of you. Remember? If you were only a machine, you never could have fought back for this long. She's right. She's right. Join Mr. Aura. How much aura does he have left, though? But is it gone? But is it gone, though? How long will it last? Did... I stop the virus? No. It's still there. But you've got an aura, Penny. A soul. That's who you are. Our friend. Find your dad! Not a machine. Find your dad to hack you! I think you're wrong, by the way. I highly doubt you're in the same place you started. I mean, yeah. You, you guys have been getting your asses kicked. Some of that. <laughs> My fault, but like, you're at war. <laughs> you're gonna take hits. Look, I'm just going to be super pissed if you all finally decide to give up the moment I switch sides. Switch sides, huh? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> or like, whatever. You all wouldn't mind. I really think Ozpin would like to say something. Oh boy. Go ahead. I was recently reminded of an old fairy tale. Mm -hmm. A young girl flees the consequences of a choice to a magical place. But. Having never learned from her initial failure, she only succeeds in spreading it. I failed all of you. I should have trusted you with the truth, and should never have run the day you discovered it. It was rough, but I think after everything that's happened here, we understand. Trust is... Trust is... a risk. It's a risk you can take on me again. Mm. I can still feel it fighting me. I can't just keep amping her forever. And we can't keep Ironwood waiting. Ah! Guys! She has to go to the vault. But then she will self-terminate. That's actually a risk we haven't considered. That's a fair point, actually. Shoot him! Shoot him! He 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 he. Okay. Whew. I, I can breathe! <laughs> I was really worried there, because Eddie was tweeting out just like, no matter what you do, y'all, don't, don't, don't post spoilers. So, okay. I can breathe. Oh, baby girl is insecure about her scars, but don't worry, you look like a badass, and your, your future boyfriend can kiss them, because intimacy. 
Can you tell I'm touch starved? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like it's one of those episodes where, like, you didn't know you needed it until you got it, you know? No head changes, gem gradient. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I can breathe again. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. I can actually talk about the soft things that happen without feeling bad about it. Okay, I'm I'm going to pull up the where? When things went Can we just- okay, Jean dipping out was the best. This- this scene has been such a long time coming. Even beyond volume 7, this scene has been a long time coming. Where is it? Where is it? I wanna know who animated this so badly! I mean, actually, since I watched it the day of, I might be able to find out on Twitter, which would be- Amazing, because I normally watch it like two days. Okay, I am li I would like to personally thank the writing team and Kruby for checking off all of my slow burn tick boxes. The accidental <laughs> confession of saying it's like that's why I that bit, the soft forehead moment, the emotional bearing and apologizing and just <laughs> thank you for my life. I have been filled with so much serotonin on this day! Oh. Don't worry, sweetie. Those will, those will glow when you use them and you'll look super badass. Do the thing. 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 What does white mean, though? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. That, that glance also, that kind of soft, that soft glance, I'm such a sucker for it. I have been waiting for Lai Ren to boop this girl for four volumes! <laughs> I have been falling for 20 minutes! <laughs> oh, I'm, as much as I would love for these two to just immediately start dating, I'm so glad that they didn't. Like, I am so glad that they're taking their time with this and that they had this conversation. Because I feel like if they just got together and acted like everything was fine and normal, it would be flat. It would be... It would be shallow. Because this is something that's been in the making since the very beginning. We've seen Nora awkwardly dance around this since the very beginning. <laughs> Everyone was sitting there just like, Arcos is the, is the true OG. And it's like, no, you fools. <laughs> Renora was there. <laughs> like, from the first time we see them, we see this. So having just this fight and then a, an apology and then immediately being together, that's that wouldn't have been satisfactory. And this is, and this is also beneficial for their characters. Cause like, she she waited for him. And she took her time and she knew that it wasn't the right moment. So she, she sat there with her feelings and dealt with it. And now it's his turn to have to do that. And I'm really glad that Nora, especially after that conversation with Blake, is having this realization of just like, you know what? I've always loved you. And since you found me, we have been Ren and Nora. And I don't know what it means to be just Nora, and I need to find that out. Like, that is so important, and that's such a good thing to talk about. And especially because, like, I think one of the biggest complaints a lot of people had with Renora, not that there were a lot, to be fair, um, was that the kind of worry of it slipping into codependency. Because that's kind of a trend with a lot of just TV show and anime couples, is that they're just like, oh, I don't, like, you complete me. And it's like, no, you should still be your own person. But it's, it's about being your own person with someone else and then 
having it you don't want to lose yourself in that relationship and i'm really glad that this is showcasing that because one that's super healthy and two it's nice to see her have that moment but it was also nice to get that the little sprinkle of extra nora lore like because we still don't know that much about her we, we we got ren's backstory we got his whole backstory episode back in volume four and we know that he found her there but when when he ran into nora she had already been on her own she had already been starving so it's a matter of what set that up well like, and i think this is probably the most we're gonna get or the most we're gonna get for a while at least i can honestly imagine us not getting much more than this um but it's like yeah the grim came because again they weren't in a kingdom they were probably in a small small town small village and when the grim came Nora's mom just ran. She just ran and she left her. So she was abandoned. What is with everyone in this show having abandonment issues? Jesus. And I think that's part of why Ren and his actions earlier really hurt too, was because it felt like that again. And that also part of is part of why she clings so hard to him, is that I wouldn't be surprised if because of that initial kind of moment and because Ren took her in then, she was like, something about me made my mom leave me there. I am a better person with Ren, so if I just stay with him and we be Ren and Nora, there won't be enough Nora to make him leave. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was kind of a mentality that she held on to for a while. Um, and then eventually that's something that she did have to let go of and did ease off over time. And that's, I think, this kind of moment here is that, you know what, I am still my own person. And kind of realizing her mom just left. And talk about the mom trauma, but also just <laughs> Jean dipping. What a king. What a king. No one wants Ren and Nora to date beside than Jean Arc. No one. It's also just very funny because I watched the episode in Volume 7 where they kissed again and were arguing at the party. And it was just like, oh god, remember the brief moment before the world went to hell? And when they were just bickering? That was, oh, the good old days. Just, I have been waiting for this boy to boop her for so long. And it's, it's that fun, it's the fun anime by struggle of, I would like to date both of these characters, but alas, they're dating each other. <sighs> So Ruby's breakdown, um, it went better than I expected, honestly. I was expecting something a little worse. I love this posing for Blake. That was a great choice. Okay, I, I'm, I'll put a link to it literally in the description of this video. Because I saw a really great analysis on the differences between Marrow and Winter. And kind of... Yeah. Yeah. What is it, baby girl? Rubs. My cat is very cuddly today. And just the differences in the two of them and how why they are sticking around for re different reasons and why they are defecting for different reasons. Um, I do think it's interesting that Ironwood waited so long to pull out his gun. I honestly thought it would take him long. I honestly thought he would do it faster. I'm glad he didn't. But I honestly thought he would do it faster, uh, considering the councilman literally walked in and said, what the hell are you doing? And then got shot in the head. And Marrow had a good time to get out like a good little chunk of a manifesto. But this just props to the person who I, I don't want to pull it up on my phone right now. Props to the person on the uh, online who talked about the differences between Marrow and Winter because they they flat out called this because this was as of um, it was as of which it hadn't gotten to ultimatum yet. And it was talking about how Marrow signed up for the Atlas military because of represented what it represented and what it, and what the ideals were behind it. It was the belief that everything they were doing was for a good. It was for a greater good. It wasn't it in the core. It wasn't personal. He signed up for the ideals and like those ideals kept getting challenged a little bit and he would be vocal about it. But ultimately, he would follow through. He would follow what he was being ordered and he would fall in line but he's slowly been shown that those ideals 
aren't being held up, that those ideals are entirely a facade, and that everything that he's justified doing, everything he's done, hasn't been towards that. And this is a really good showcase of exactly that, and you can see where the other two are faulting, because you can see um, Elm starting just like, I also do not agree, but bro, you're taking a little far. And it's, it's even the, even his lines where it's like, they're, they're just kids. It was like, this is war. And you can see that difference here with Winter because he's realizing that th this was his tipping point. This was the, are you defecting, son? This was his realization that all of these ideals that he claimed to, that he signed up for were not being enacted. And that it all, it all was for naught. Whereas Winter, everything for Winter is personal. And again, this is just directly referencing that thing that I was reading about it. And I will link it. And I very strongly encourage everyone to read it because it's great. Is that everything for Winter is personal. Not only because, like, her sister is fighting for Mantle. And not because, only because she was raised in Atlas. But she joined the military partially out of personal reasons. Her dad constantly tried to get her back for personal reasons. She saw a new purpose for personal reasons. It is exclusively personal for her versus per exclusively ideological for Mero. Is that every choice she has made has been to for someone she cares about. From letting Weiss go at the end of Volume 7, letting, letting Weiss and Penny leave, which ultimately spirals later on. It's every choice that she makes has been something of indifference of rather than leaning a little further into being an Atlesian soldier it is playing a middle ground or feigning indifference or just instead of going after her even though she's in critical condition instead of being like they are leaving on this transport you can track it here of just going i need medical assistance sent back up those differences all they all spiral and it all stacks and Everything from letting Penny go led to later on at Amity Arena with Penny and Emerald having that moment, which only furthered to push Emerald closer to Cinder and Cinder pushing Emerald farther away, which led to Emerald ultimately defecting, which led to Emerald helping save Penny and cause all of these issues later on, is that everything for Winter is personal and all of her choices are personal. It's just a matter of which of the people close to her can she save. And you can see that that was all of her development with Penny last volume was her feeling was her telling herself her feelings don't matter. She's trying to separate herself from the equation because she has to be perfect. She can't have a fault because if she is flawed and if she gets angry then she's just like her father. She cuz who she's terrified of turning into. She's terrified of being her father. She's terrified of being her mother. She's terrified of being bossed around and being a pu of, of just being a puppet, which is why she had that whole thing of like it bothered me when he chose me as the winter maiden, but I chose it for myself is that she's trying to reach this standard that is impossible, which is the most relatable mood, but it's in pursuit of that that sometimes she'll have these moments of inaction. And she thinks that she's playing it safe by not really choosing a side, but by choosing the people closer to her, it creates this domino effect. So it's, it's even that as as scared as she is of having that power, as scared as she is of getting close to people, she has it. It's just a matter of if she denies it or not. And that's part of what's pushing her. Of which, shout out to Winter Schnee for saving this boy's literal tail. Because he was about to get shot in the back. And then she was... And then... She, thank God Winter Schnee is smart. Thank God she's quick on her feet. She really... She really just did, okay, he's about to shoot him. I saw him shoot a guy for less. He's getting ready to pull out the, the trigger because he's, he's, Ironwood wasn't even giving him lip service. He wasn't even responding. He was just like, get it out of your system. If you don't fall back in line, I will shoot you here. She recognized that and put him in cuffs. But to specifically her wording, I'll throw this traitor in the, br it is like, the Schnees are not the best at acting. To be fair, I don't think most of the people in the show are good at acting. 
Especially against when they're having to act directly opposite of what they would normally do. So I think it's pretty safe to say that she's gonna lock him up and then he will escape. I really enjoyed the scenes with Robin and Crow though. I think that was very important of just Crow has always been working for the greater good, but there's always been a degree of selfishness to his actions. And I think he really did need to get called out on that. And I'm very glad that Robin did it. And her whole thing, it's just like, you're the better huntsman. Like, <sighs> it was very good. It was very good. This bit makes me emo. I love their sassy villain friend. I'm so glad that she's joined. I am such a sucker for any time like a villain character joins the squad and has that awkward, we're not, we're not friends. I don't know what you're talking about. Like she's very much acting in a way reminiscent of volume one Weiss and volume two Weiss. Just the, it's like, I hate these games of emotions we play. It's like, don't worry Weiss, we'll get through this together. Shut up, don't touch me. She says as she holds them closer. It has a very similar energy to it. And it's also just really fun to have this kind of like witty antagonistic character because for the most part um, the Fellowship of Remnant is predominantly not optimistic per se but they're not antagonistic. They don't have that like bitter cynicism a lot of the time and I feel like Emerald's a nice pinch of that in there. It She adds, she adds flavor <laughs> of which okay Ruby has had this coming for such a long time. This is so much on her shoulders. Shout out to Yang immediately going into big sister mode, which is appreciated. <laughs> oh, that's the face of depression. I'm so glad this wasn't buffering at any point. I'm gonna cry, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to cry. I'm gonna need to watch this eight more times. Just just re-watching volume seven and eight for the purpose of like putting together that video has really just got me. Okay, her posing here makes me so sad. Baby girl. <laughs> and the addressing of just the the addressing of Summer Rose. Just that's what happened to mom. And you can see Yang had that idea in her mind, but she was like, I'm not gonna let myself think about that. I cannot afford to let myself think about that right now. And then when she says that, it just, it just comes for her. And she's just a little girl again, like. And I think this is one of the first times, and you can kind of see it there, the first times Yang really realizes how much Summer's death hit Ruby. Because that's something that we always hear, is we always hear Summer and we always hear people talking about how Ruby handled it. We never hear how Ruby handled it. We never hear from her. It's always Ruby couldn't even talk yet, or she was too young to understand. And it was like, she clearly did, and that's the first kind of inkling that we see of them realizing that. And very much that it's like, at some point, Salem realized she could do, she could experiment. So it is very much that like, when she got Summer, she realized she could experiment on them and find something. So very much that uh, Summer was the intermediary period between killing Silver-Eyed Warriors and making them into hounds. But I really do love this conversation. It's very much... And I feel like there's a moment there of Yang being like, Ah, so this is how I was in Volume 3. Just the... But when, when she was having her fit of valid anger and depression post-arm um, and Ruby tried to make things better. I feel like she's just like, oh, okay, I understand. But <sighs> Ruby, like she feels like she's being punished for that very optimism that Blake was talking to her about. And which is just so sad. And she's just, she's just so baby. Okay, this face made me cry and I wanna draw it, but I also don't wanna make myself sad. In this scene, I'm very- thank god Jean unlocked his semblance. 
but I was wondering how long it would take. Also, like, we just appreciate the fact that she was able to take off with a with more force than the hound. Cause yeah, the hound did drag Ren around. But granted, it was already in flight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take in its like velocity into why he couldn't hold it down because he wasn't starting on the ground and it was starting in motion. Whereas Blake was able to hold it back for a little bit by herself. I mean, Blake Belladonna shredded. That's not up for debate. But that is, she, she did have a bit of an advantage there. But the fact that it took Ren, Nora, Jean, Blake, Yang, Emerald, and a ruby hanging from her waist to, like, hold her down, like, impressive. Thank God. So, I, I want to draw this really badly, but also I want to draw it as the Pieta because I'm basic. I'm very basic. I, do you ever wonder how this would, all would look if they hadn't started showing us the aura? Like, they would have had to for plot purposes, but it's like, it's fun looking back at the earlier volumes because like, we don't see someone's aura take a hit or an aura shatter until volume three. So we had two volumes without it. And it's one of those things where it's like, can you just imagine this without it? It's, it's, I'm very glad they have it. It's just, mm, baby girl. I'm glad Ozpin finally apologized. Also just blatantly calling out Alice in Wonderland. Feel like the next episode might be called Trust. Uh, we'll see. There's, there's been a lot of talking about it. Okay, I didn't go to the... There's not an after credit thing, right? No, okay. I, won't, I thought so, I just... I live in constant fear of missing something. But... It is interesting that like, they were like, what do we do here? And then the fact that they, they didn't consider going to see Ironwood and going to the vault, which is fair. I can't exactly blame them because you wouldn't consider it. But I'm very curious. I feel like Oscar needs to point out that Ironwood shot him. Because that is information that still has not been shared. And I feel like that's information that really should be shared. But the one thing that they need to figure out what to do, though, is the... Oh, I guess, actually... Never mind. I was going to say, we still have to figure, solve the problem of I need to open the vault and then self-terminate. But... If Jean just boosts her aura again, they should be able to solve that part long enough to get in contact with Pietro, you know? Um, I am a little concerned about Watts and Cinder and what they're up to. Because just, I feel like he's he's up to no good, which is not surprising. It's their very nature is to be up to no good. But what he was doing with the drones has me, has me worried. Okay, I, I didn't realize how much I needed an episode like this. Like, I went in here expecting someone to get fatally wounded. I went in expecting something horrible to happen. And instead it was just good old-fashioned emotional character development. And it soothes my soul. <laughs> so thank you, Groovy, for a moment of calm before you inevitably rip out our spleens and smack us with them. <sighs> All right, I'll see you guys next week. I'm gonna try to keep these a little on the shorter side because they keep getting super long and that's hard on my editor. It's a pain for me to upload. So hopefully I can talk faster and keep my brain more in line soon. We'll see. Um, so I'll have that Ironwood video. I might attach it here. I'm debating if I should include volume eight or not, but it literally is just every scene where you show him, sh show him showing these tendencies throughout the whole series. And it goes back to volume two, y'all. Everyone's saying this is character assassination. This has been here from the start. Literally, I was editing it live in my Discord before even reaching volume seven. So volumes one through four, there was 18 minutes of James exhibiting this behavior. <laughs> like, it goes back to volume two with telling Penny there's a war coming. It goes back Volume 3, especially, with bringing his whole military and Crow and Ozpin calling him out for that. The end of Volume 2, where an Ironwood deliberately threw Ozpin under the bus in front of the council in order to decrease his power and standing with them. It... It's been here for a while, guys. 
you're just mad that you stand a fascist. <laughs> um, after that hot take, which I still can't believe is a hot take, uh, wish me luck. Uh, as of the time that this is live, I'm applying for something that would be fantastic to get, and I really hope that I get it. Um, just cross your fingers for me, cross your fingers, cross your toes, wish me luck. Uh, if I don't get it, I probably won't talk about it. If I do get it, I don't know if I'll be able to talk about it. But, just cross your fingers for me. I've been working for this for a while, and I just, I hope it turns out this time. And I'll see you guys next week when things inevitably get dangerous. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. I, my brain is minced meat. Uh, I hit 18k uh, like a week and a half ago, and I kept forgetting to say something. I talked about it on stream, but thank you guys so much. Uh, it's really surreal that there's 18,000 people, especially because I haven't been super regular with uploads. I'm not particularly active in the community, which is something I'm working on, but I, I do really appreciate it. And I don't know, it's, it's just weird to think about that I started this channel with my friend for, for Let's Plays like December 2015 like the first thing I ever uploaded I think was like a Ruby AMV because I needed to learn Premiere Pro for an internship and it just kind of snowballed and spiraled and you guys have always been so supportive and so sweet and amazing and I really do appreciate it and thank you guys so much like I've had so many opportunities and I've met so many amazing people all because of you guys and just thank thank you really <laughs> I, I really do appreciate it. It really does mean a lot. Um, I swear I'll try to be a little bit more active. Might might be pulling my Ruby cosplay together sooner than expected because there's still snow up at our cabin, so it's kind of perfect. Um, although I'll have to do two versions, one to cover with gunk. We'll see. But I'll, I'll see you guys next week. All 18k of you. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs>